The LV2 system meets A17.1 elevator standard requirements for alternative no-load testing methods. This electronic testing system will significantly improve CAT5 testing. According to the A17 standard, the LV2 system is based on sound engineering principles and validated with engineering tests, has a procedure manual with detailed instructions, including permissible equipment range and limitations, and generates documentation meeting all reporting requirements. Testing and certification has correlated this system's no-load test results with previously acquired full-load tests and ensures results are equivalent or safer. For a complete listing of A17.1 requirements for alternative testing, consult sections 8.6.11.10. All of the standard steps of the Category 5 testing process apply. The elevator service company must complete all required checks not covered by the LV2 system, including, but not limited to, inspection and testing of the overspeed governor and visual inspection and cleaning of safeties. It is the responsibility of the company performing the tests to know and follow all applicable requirements. Before conducting LV2 testing, it is critical to verify date, time, and units of measure at the Config or Settings screen of the UCD and MSM12. Press Save if changes are made. Open the testing dialog on the UCD and follow the prompts to enter all data pertaining to the elevator system being tested. After you've entered all relevant information, you'll be prompted to position the PS2 on top of the elevator car. Attach the PS2 to the crosshead using the magnetic base provided and set it either on the far left or far right as close as possible to the corresponding guide rail given the available car top and crosshead space. Ensure that it is vertical, and the marked x-axis points to the elevator entrance. Secure the MSM-12 to its final position, which depends on whether the elevator is roped 1 to 1 or 2 to 1. Secure it with a strong strap, and ensure it cannot fall or move around during testing. Switch the units on. Keep them close to each other to allow them to synchronize via radio frequency. When the units are synced, the green light on the PS2 will turn on, Green check marks and serial numbers will appear next to the image of each device on the UCD screen, and the MSM-12 will display an icon indicating connectivity. Now that the units are synchronized, you no longer need to keep them close for radio frequency contact, as they will automatically resynchronize when you bring them back together at the end of testing. Do not turn off equipment until all tests are fully completed and the UCD displays the home screen. Otherwise, all measurements will be irretrievably lost. Next, you'll be prompted to take a measurement of the counterweight. Install the sensors as indicated on the screen and connect them to the MSM-12. Sensor location varies depending on rope suspension. Press Weigh on the UCD to record the weight. Then follow the same process to measure the weight of the empty elevator car. For systems with additional weight included for compensation, you will also be prompted by on-screen UCD instructions to enter sizes of compensation cables and a good estimate of the rise of your installation. You may want to gather this information before starting your setup for testing. Knowing the weights, also known as the masses, is a critical part of doing CAT5 testing. This has always been true. This data is estimated in the existing tables in A17.1 for full load testing and is known to be one of the shortcomings of the process. Our newer elevator standard eliminates this problem by requiring weights to be measured and documented during alternative testing. For systems using compensation ropes, you'll need to complete an additional step that involves measuring the tie-down compensation weight. This step falls between weighing the counterweight and weighing the empty car. Simply follow the instructions on the UCD screen to place a sensor on the compensation rope underneath the counterweight. 